2022 and what a day it has been. Can I please request everyone to kindly settle down? Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you all are energized and ready to welcome our valedictory speaker and the jury chair for the Pitch Top 50 Brands. Please give a huge round of applause for Mr. Sarabir Singh, CEO, PolicyBazaar.com. In his address, Singh will speak on Policy Bazaar's consumer-centric focus to becoming a market leader. Uh, good evening, everyone. We normally in Policy Bazaar, people do respond. So I'll try again. Good evening, everyone. Okay, thanks. I know, I'm sure it's been a long day, so uh, I won't trouble you too much. Uh, but let me, on behalf of everyone, first thank Exchange for Media for putting up this uh, wonderful event. Uh, I hope you had a nice day and an interesting day. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, when I think uh, Dr. Batra and uh, some of the organizing team reached out to me to talk about uh, being part of this jury. Uh, one of the things that I felt was that uh, the reason or rather I felt it's worth doing is that finally all of us are in the business of brand building. Uh, whether we call ourselves chief marketing officers or uh, whatever title you, know, you prefer, whether you're in advertising or whichever side you are on the, of the table you're on, uh, finally what we're all trying to do uh, in many different ways is to build a brand because finally a brand is a point of differentiation. Finally, the objective of a business is to make money, at least in the conventional sense, and money can only be made if there's differentiation. If you're a commodity, it's really hard to make money, and all of us are finally trying to escape that reality. So I always tell our team that we are in the business of brand building, whether we like it or not, whether we you know, uh, call ourselves a marketeer or not. The, the other thing I just want to share with you at Policy Bazaar that while you know we have almost 10,000 people, uh, I'm blessed to have a team of over 10,000 people, but at the end of the day, today we spend more on marketing than we spend on operations. So for us, and I'm, I'm sure this must be a reality for many companies, that marketing is the most important uh, element of our business mix. And it's something that I dare say still doesn't get, in my opinion, the kind of, uh, I would say, the respect or the due that it should get. There is a tendency, and, and I believe, and I blame myself for it, and I blame some of uh, other people who are in marketing for it, because I believe that we tend to trivialize it to some extent. We, we say that it's a, you know, quote-unquote, creative profession. Uh, it's something that it's a whimsical thing which only few people can understand and the rest of us you know, have to kind of nod along. And I think we do ourselves a disservice when we do that. Uh, and I'll explain why. The disservice is that, see, if you mystify something, it gives you a little bit of pleasure for that moment and obviously makes you feel part of a cult. But actually, if it has to be a mainstream activity, you have to allow transparency. As I always say, you have to allow sunlight into the room. So I know there are many... Uh, senior people in marketing here. So my request to you, and that's always my request to Sai, who's our CMO also, is that you have to engage with the rest of the team. You have to engage in the conversation to say why marketing is a very good return on investment, and you need to defend yourself, and both quantitatively and qualitatively. I think we must respect the rest of the uh, community, the business community, and I think they are smart enough to understand qualitative arguments also. So it's, it's nobody's question that everything is quantitative and it's something that can only be done in a numerical way, but it's something that we should uh, talk about. So sorry, that's just my small pitch for uh, focusing on this side of marketing as well. I uh, also want to talk about the process. You know, we were part of a jury to select the top 50 brands. Uh, again, it was an exercise that was made very... I would say it was very uh, liberating, the exercise, because one of the things that... Uh, exchange for media said was that this is not a quantitative exercise, but it's an exercise of your opinions. 
So we put together this jury. The jury was uh, made of diverse people, you know, from different industries, different parts of, uh, I would say, the marketing chain. And I think people were allowed to express their opinion. So the final shortlist or what you will see towards the end of this evening is a reflection, I would say, as much of the jury and their opinions as it may be of any kind of, uh, you know, very, very objective measure. Uh, so I think that, that's really good. I, I think one should, uh, you know, in this era where we obsess over numbers, it's also important to obsess over opinions, but of course, hopefully of the right people. Uh, so as you see that shortlist, uh, I hope you'll agree that it was selected with some care, and I think it represents some of the good work that brands have done over the last uh, year or so. Uh, now let me turn to the subject this evening, uh, which is to talk about the Policy Bazaar journey. Now first, uh, first let me set the context for you about insurance as a category. Now Policy Bazaar was started 14 years ago in 2008. The, the landscape, and I would dare say it's the landscape even today, was that insurance was a category which was sold, not bought. So there were very few people who woke up in the morning saying, today I want to buy insurance, right? Mostly it was somebody was an agent who came to you uh, or you went to a bank branch and somebody pitched it to you. Agents typically tended to be so-called family friends or relatives. Uh, and the idea was that they would explain to you why you should buy insurance. And the challenge with that was that obviously they pitched products that were uh, suitable more from their perspective necessarily, not necessarily as much as from the customer's perspective. So the very idea of Policy Bazaar was to stand in opposition to that, to say that we would take a customer-centric approach and we would say that we will pick products which are good for the customer, believing that in the long run, what is good for the customer will be good for the company. Now let me explain what I mean. Right? The challenge in India is that we are still a developing country. Uh, you know, whatever our per capita income is, two, three thousand dollars. What that really means is that as a country, we do not have the means to actually offer social security. So if, if something happens in a family, there is a death or disability or any kind of long-term disease, the, the person for, to whom this happens, it's not just an impact on that person, but it's an impact on the whole family. And I'm sure some of you would have had that experience that the entire family is set back by a few generations because it takes time to dig yourself out of that hole. And what we believe is that insurance is a solution to that problem. Uh, as you can imagine, it's insurance, you collect money from a lot of people and you pay out to the few who need it. So we be believe that this is a wonderful uh, sort of, if you think about it, invention. This was invented about five, 600 years ago after the Great Fire of London. And this is a wonderful thing, especially in the Indian context. Now, if you marry these two things, the fact that there was no pull platform and the fact that it's something that is really good for people. We said that we should create an awareness and create a market for this. And if you think of the key marketing challenge, right? What was the key marketing challenge? The key marketing challenge is to build awareness for these types of insurance because the agents are not selling health insurance and term insurance. They are selling savings products, which are good because you'll have tax saving for ATD or whatever the story is. And they are selling products which are good for them. So first was to create an awareness that you need this insurance because people were not even aware of that. Now the biggest problem in creating this awareness is that people's first reaction is that I know all these stories, I don't need to buy this. I am not going to die, I am not going to have any health problem, it happens to other people, doesn't happen to me. Second problem, even if you convince them that yes, it could happen to you, then they say that I don't need to buy it now. I am quite young, I am only 30 or 35 or whatever. So I don't need to buy it now, I'll buy it later. So if you think about it, the core problem is procrastination or inertia. A lot of people are aware that insurance is good for you, but they are not willing to commit or they are not willing to buy. And the response that our team and we have created over the years has always been you'll find that we have very hard hitting advertising sometimes to the point of antagonizing consumers. People say that this, you're showing us too dark a picture, but we believe that if we don't do hard hitting advertising, the person just watches the ad and then moves on. 
So if you will see that in insurance, many times people use, you know, happy advertising. You'll have a happy family and the happy family will say, I'm happy because I have insurance. Regretfully, those kind of advertising does not work. It does not lead to any action and it goes away. So we've always believed that the core insight is against procrastination and you have to focus on it. There have been almost, I would say, three parts to our journey uh, over these last 14 years. The first part was really to bring transparency to insurance to talk about what is the good, what is the right product. And we started by, by basically trying to explain that this is a comparison platform. So the first ad, which uh, was very effective but caused a lot of consternation in the industry was, we said, Ullu mat bano, that don't buy without comparing. And as you can see, we actually had an agent dressed as a Ullu. And you can imagine why this led to certain, uh, we were also, I think, a young company, a startup, and I think we maybe overdid the whole thing. The second creative on the right is a slightly better version of the same, where we said, where we showed a mother who basically intervened and said, don't buy without comparing. So the first platform or the first positioning that we took was of an aggregator platform. People were used to that from travel and other industries. And we said that please compare before you buy. And again, in as much of a hard hitting manner as we could. This was the first phase, I would say three, four, five years. Uh, the amount, our outlays at that time were also very small. Uh, we were still growing as a business. But we took this leap of faith because as you know that unlike digital or performance marketing, brand marketing has very little, you know, direct return or returns on day one. And to overcome this point, uh, because this is something that is very important for us, we actually created our own metrics as to how to judge whether an ad is working or not working. So instead of the normal uh, language, which is around, you know, rating point, which is around visibility, which is around, you know, frequency, et cetera, et cetera, we use a very direct metric, which is the number of leads that we get on any particular day. And we actually measure the leads by hour, by you know, by minute, whatever you want to do. And we try to measure the lift that we get from an ad. Now, uh, many people have told me that this is a very short term and maybe somewhat, uh, you know, uh, extreme approach to measurement and to, but I think if you think about it, it's an easy to understand approach. Uh, we are, I think, uh, mature enough to understand that not all advertising leads to similar lifts. So it's not that we panic if the lift is not as much as the previous ad had or something, but it allows us to have a common language in the company and we are able to actually see, you know, what, what kind of response we are getting. Uh, the second approach that we platform that we took after the comparison, when we realized that comparison was not enough, there weren't enough people who were interested in insurance. So we actually stepped back and took actually a bold call to focus on category creation. So the first ad is for the first time when in the insurance industry, uh, so it's an interesting thing that if you think about it, that in such a old industry which has been around, which has such big brands in terms of insurers, we were the first to bring really a big time film star into the uh, into this market. Uh, we spent a lot of money at that time compared to what we had and to bring Akshay Kumar and I think that served as a, the whole objective was to break the clutter, to show that this is a really big thing and Akshay didn't talk about Policy Bazaar. He spoke about the need to buy term insurance. So this ad is a Yamraj ad where basically, you know, we show that if you die without having term insurance, what is the problem that you leave for your family? Uh, similarly, the ad on the right has a similar concept that a person who has died has not bought term insurance. Uh, this, like I said, this sometimes puts us in opposition to uh, certain society sensibilities, etc. But it's a fact of life. I think none of us can get away from it and it's something that we do. We try to use humor to kind of cut the edge so that it's not super direct and makes, makes people feel too bad, uh, but it's something that we uh, feel that has to be done. So category creation was the second phase of our journey. Uh, again, we continue to do that. Even today, if you see, we have campaigns around the year and we some of them are for category creation. Uh, some, of course, talk about Policy Bazaar. Then the third phase, which started about two or three years ago, was when we realized that uh, 
let me back uh, back up a bit we actually saw in two or three industry surveys these were surveys not done by us but when customers were asked or consumers were asked insurance what is the brand that comes to your mind we were surprised to know that after life insurance corporation and then some people would say one of the big bank brands and then second or third would be policy bazaar and suddenly we started also seeing in our feedback one very important thing that customers started telling us that we buy policies from you you need to service our policies we don't care whether uh, we bought x brand or y brand policy bazaar has sold this brand and you have to service these policies and i think for a while the consumer was ahead of us like if i was honest but once we realized this point we put in place a huge service network uh, today you know i'm very proud to tell you that uh, we have a person in 114 cities in india uh, many of us can't name 114 cities uh, i can bet you uh, and we offer 30 minute claim support so if you are in any of those cities if you go to a hospital and you need help our person will show up in 30 minutes so this was a very powerful proposition uh again we backed it up by using our precious time that we had with akshay to say that this is something that we can provide now this was a huge leap of faith because if you remember i told you that we measure everything in terms of leads now these kind of this advertising will not result in direct lead creation because people may or may not you know feel the need but this was a leap of faith i think this was we were maturing as a company as a as a brand builder and we said that now our customers expect this and we need to provide this so this was i would say the third phase so today if you see we are between the second and third phase we alternate between category creation we spend a lot of money still on category creation and of course we uh, also talk about claim support and various other things that we do now this been another part of our journey which is in terms of how we have been guided by customers or consumers and what i mean by that is that we get three different types of consumers especially early on if you think about it the digital medium was a slightly exclusive medium it was used by the affluent it was used by uh, you know people who were better educated and of course that has changed dramatically in the last 2 3 years now the digital medium the digital consumer is as mainstream as i think any other consumer and initially there were a lot of people who were happy to buy on their own so there was a, there is still a set of people who come to policy bazaar they in fact sometimes get uh, upset by our calling and they prefer to buy on their own so one of the things that we've tried to do now is to create a clean journey for if you want to buy on your own the second thing that we've always had is tele calling support because we understood that insurance is a complex product people are not able to buy on their own even so called educated people find it hard so we always had tele calling support and that's something that we continue to do now we have tele video etc about a year ago uh, we added a new leg to our journey uh, and this was again because of listening to consumers what consumers told us especially in uh, smaller cities was that they don't buy from us because there is no physical person they want to meet a person now this was a bit this was actually a very uh i would say polarizing debate in our company because the feeling was that as a online as a digital company we are going in the wrong direction why are we you know introducing an offline element to our uh, journey and we i will say that we debated hard we did a lot of pilot we did a lot of work to see whether this makes sense both from a economic perspective as well as from a consumer perspective and what we found that the answer was a unequivocal yes and in hindsight it seems a bit uh, bizarre that we spent so much time debating this obviously people prefer to buy from other people uh, they start the journey on policybazaar.com so all journeys start from policybazaar.com but they feel that they feel more comforted they feel better if they are able to speak to a person now this is a this has huge logistical implications uh, but i think you know if you want to do well in india one of the things is that you have to embrace operational complexity and it's something that you cannot shy away from uh and i think uh, i am really proud of our team we did not add any uh, you know sort of external experts or something the same team which had built the call center business has built this offline business we are today present in 65 cities so in 12 months we went from 0 to 65 cities and we are you know able to serve customers 
about 20% of our business now comes from the offline business and I feel that a large portion of this 20% is incremental. This is business that would not have come to us if we had not uh, embraced this uh, journey. I think the last part that I just want to talk to you about uh, is something again that we have changed in the last few years. That in marketing, I think there are, at least the way I look at any business, there are two moments of truth. Uh, the first moment of truth is when a person selects the product. So you do whatever you can to make them select your product. And the second moment of truth is when they use the product. And in insurance, it's a very interesting business. Uh, we are a pay now and use later product, right? In fact, pay now and hopefully never use later product. Now that creates a very, very unique dynamic. Uh, at the end of the day, India is still a low trust society. So what happens is that people are very skeptical that if I pay now, will I ever get anything? Will you find some reason to deny my claim? Will there be some, uh, you know, fine print that I didn't understand and you will deny my claim? So what we said was that we have to address this second moment of truth head on. And we can't shy away from, as somebody who wants to build a category, as someone who wants to drive penetration. So this is just an example. We have put in place a huge uh, claims support infrastructure now. Uh, as I mentioned to you, we have offline support, we have online support. And what we now do with insurance companies is what we call claim samadhan, where if somebody has got a claim and believes that they have been wronged or you know they were right and they were not given a claim, we actually organize. Uh, so these, this gentleman is from an insurance company and you know these are two customers. We call them, uh, we give them lunch, and then we say that please sit together and work it out. Of course, not all claims get worked out, but it creates a positive dynamic, both with the insurance company. So I must tell you that creating this dynamic with the insurance company is also very important, because for the first time, there is a company which is so keen that they are calling you know, uh, customers to solve problems, and consumers also appreciate it. Even those for whom the claim is not approved uh, do appreciate the fact that we brought them together and we made this effort. So this is our most recent, and I would say, newest effort with that we are doing to build this category. Uh, and hopefully you've seen through this journey that right from the beginning till now, Policy Bazaar has focused on building awareness. Uh, I like to say that there was a line in that movie, Bend It Like Beckham, I don't know if you've seen it, I'm hopefully many of you would have, where she says that, you know, you have to bend the rules and not break them. And if you see, that has been the journey of Policy Bazaar also. We have bent with the consumer, we have listened to the consumer, and I think more important, sometimes there is this feeling that the consumer will tell you everything. Honestly, the consumer cannot tell you everything. The consumer doesn't know himself or herself what they want. But what you can divine through what they say and through what they do. So the most important thing is to see what they do versus what they say. And there, if you follow that, then slowly you can go with the consumer and do fairly transformational things. Uh, so I would say that's been our journey. Uh, I encapsulate it by saying that we are moving from transactions to trust. That's really the journey that we are on. I'm, I'm sure there's a long way to go, but uh, I would like to say that we have made some progress and it's something that we'll keep going. Thank you. Thanks. Sir.